Welcome back everyone. Today's video is going to be quite a doozy. I had a friend come in with his old AMD FX8350 gaming PC and complain about crashes and boot problems. So today we're going to try and diagnose the issue, along with adding in a few upgrades I wanted to offer him. To start, I wanted to take a quick look inside the case to see exactly what we were dealing with here. And my god. I'm not sure if this thing has ever been cleaned. The amount of dust in our old EVO 212 is kind of my first concern looking at everything here. Also the graphics card in here is an R9 380, which I plan on upgrading to a 1070 Ti that I've had laying around for a while, which should feel like a real nice upgrade. The R9 380 concerns me because the driver updates are no longer supported by AMD for this card. Even though I believe it would probably be perfectly capable if they would have kept up with the updates, in newer titles I suspect it could be one of the reasons crashes are happening. Last thing I wanted to take a look at was the power supply. I also worry that perhaps this old Corsair PSU is turning itself off due to overheating or some other factor from all the dust buildup inside of it. So we have quite a bit of work cut out for us today. First thing I wanted to do is try to replicate the boot issue as well as the crashing issue. Right away I was able to replicate the boot problem where the system would turn on but not even attempt to display anything. Unfortunately this PC seems to be built on a pretty cheap and old motherboard so we have no debug LED to let us know what is potentially getting hung up on the boot. But turning the build off and back on fixed the problem and allowed it to boot just as my friend had told me. To try and force a crash, I let Madden 23 run with the AI playing for about 30 minutes as this was the game I was told gave the most issues. And nothing happened. It seemed to run the game actually pretty fine for me and I was told it would usually shut off after about 20 minutes or so. Without wanting to invest more time, I decided to just get to work with cleaning the old system and seeing how that went. First thing was to take everything out of the case. It's always fun to look at these older builds and motherboards. I was shocked that it only had a 4 pin power connector for the CPU. Also the cooler looked like it was too tall for the RAM to fit with the shroud on so they had to remove the shroud to get it to fit over the RAM slots. Now that we have the motherboard out we can get a closer look at the dust build up on the Cooler Master 212 EVO and holy crap. That has got to be the most buildup I have ever seen on a heatsink like this. Just wow. As I started working on removing the heatsink, I remember how much I really disliked this old mounting bracket on the EVO 212. It really isn't the most secure thing ever, but I guess honestly back then it didn't really need to be. Finally, we lift the cooler off and the thermal paste is absolutely bone dry. I have honestly never seen such dry thermal paste before, it is literally chalk. So just by taking it apart, at this point I have honestly already found a good handful of reasons this computer is having issues, and a lot of them are due to just a lack of maintenance. Time to wipe away the old thermal paste and reveal our 8350. What a powerhouse. Time to get to dusting. I usually would just use some canned air and do a quick clean, but the dust buildup is so extreme I had to take this outside with an air pump to avoid blowing all this dust around our office and make sure it gets fully cleaned with some more heavy duty equipment. Sorry the camera angle isn't always the best, but I hope it's satisfying to see all the dust blow away. I cleaned the cooler, motherboard, solid state drive, and of course the power supply. Now I'm sure you guys are wondering why I didn't do the rest of the case and other items and honestly I plan to just replace everything else in the build. We're going to be using a new fan mount for the EVO 212 cooler because even for the standards back then the old fan was super cheap and was frequently recommended to be replaced. The heatsink design is kind of the same as it's always been for the EVO 212, so with a simple fan upgrade, I expect that we will get a lot more performance. We will also use a brand new case filled with brand new fans, so the rest of the dusty crap that we have can go right in the trash. Uh, in hindsight, I probably should have unscrewed the power supply from its housing to clean it more easily, but with some extra time and effort, I was able to get all the big chunks of dust out. 
Just had to freeze my butt off a little bit in the process. With everything cleaned and dusted, it's time to install our cooler back on. Moisturizing the old dry CPU with a fresh wad of thermal paste, I crudely spread it out. Not a big deal as the pressure from the cooler will probably do the rest of the work for us. I just wanted to get it as even as possible. Screwing on the crummy old bracket was kind of a pain, but we got it done. Time to mount on our new fan. I grabbed an old EK fan that came with an AIO liquid cooler. The design is pretty direct with a fully square bracket and it's a nice fan that should push a lot of air through the fins. Probably a huge upgrade over that old snap-on fan. We also changed the mounting orientation to pull air through the top of the case and blow onto the back plate of the GPU which should be more efficient instead of pulling hot air up to blow out of the top of the case like we had it before. Moving on we have our old power supply and new case so time to install the PSU. Honestly, after dusting and cleaning it, it darn near looks brand new. Next step is to install the motherboard into our new case. I already loaded up the case with a full set of extra fans I had laying around. None of them match, but I figure since it's a free upgrade, my friend probably won't mind. Surprisingly, this old motherboard has a USB 3.0 header, so it'll be cool to get some use out of that now since the old case didn't even have one. Off camera, I did a little bit of cable management and installed his SATA SSD. But now it's time to install the 1070 Ti upgrade. Surprisingly the card is kind of long so it was a decently close fit. Alright it's the moment of truth everyone. Let's see if it boots and it does. First try this time so no fiddling with the PSU like we had to last time. First thing to do with the new equipment is to run a DDU to uninstall the old drivers from the system and get the NVIDIA drivers downloaded. With the proper drivers installed, it's time to do a stress test. I decided to run Cinebench and the Heaven benchmark at the same time to really get the CPU and GPU working. I used Core Temp to see how hot the CPU would get and used the Temp Gauge and Heaven benchmark to make sure the GPU also wasn't getting too hot. Honestly, both ran extremely cool, and after running both benchmarks for 30 minutes without a crash, I decided it was time to send it home with my friend. With the build finished and fixed up, I'm happy to say I think this computer can still get another good year or two of use out of it, even in brand new titles at 1080p, as long as you turn the settings down. Everything is working great now that it's all cleaned up, and honestly, even the case to me looks a little better than the old one, even though the fans are a bit of a hodgepodge mess. You know, I think this just goes to show what can happen to a rig without regular maintenance. All sorts of issues were going on, and really it only needed a good clean, some new thermal paste, and a light GPU upgrade to something with modern driver support, and now it's running fantastic. So if you take anything away from this video, it's just a quick PSA, make sure you clean your rig regularly, every few months at least, and every couple of years, apply some new thermal paste to your CPU, and maybe even take apart your GPU and put some new thermal paste on. It'll save you from having headaches in the future and increase the longevity of your build by a long time. With all that being said guys, thanks for watching today. I hope you get some value out of this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. And if you enjoy some of my other content, please consider subscribing. Lastly, let me know what you think of this old school build down in the comments below. Once again, thanks for watching and hope you all have a good day.